Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage here in Las Vegas for SAS Innovate 2024. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE with my co-host Dave Vellante, head of CUBE Research. Our next guest is John Boyd, Vice President, Solutions Product Management at SAS. He's got the keys to the kingdom on the product management and he's got the solutions. Great, to, great. thanks for coming on theCUBE. Oh, thanks for having me. Great so you get the product management, you get the solutions. So right now we're, we're in a mo mode where people are experimenting with AI, rolling out production workloads. Here at the keynote, Brian Harris and the team showed a customer with a production workload with an AI stack yep. that only had really Amazon as an external company and then a lot of SaaS and then customer data and stuff and generative AI and outcome. Not a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. So it's a real enterprise workload. Yes, yes. Big time. Correct, correct. And that's what we're seeing, like the VIA platform is great for that sort of model governance, right? To get the design time of that model, what you want to do to get the business outcome. And then from a solutions perspective, we're taking a lot of that investment and trying to figure out how do we create that runtime environment to adopt that model within our solutions and whether it's coming from what Udo's organization is going to do with his announcement or it's something a customer is going to build on their own, et cetera, and build the sort of business workflow around that to run the people's businesses. So you, you are involved in the billion dollar investment. Yep. You're, well, not you, but yeah. you <laughs> your, your team and SaaS, it's, you work for SaaS. Um, you guys announced a billion dollars to be invested into the SaaS teams to build AI. Can you share some of the results? What are sure. we seeing? I mean, obviously we saw, we were at Explore last year, only six months ago. Now we're seeing fruit on the tree there. Mm -hmm. What Can you share da information, data, and color commentary? Sure, I mean, there's a lot that's gone in with that. So the first thing was getting the solutions on Via4, as you heard from Brian this morning. So that was a big investment to get in there. And now you're seeing more and more innovation coming out. Last year we released SaaS Health and we released uh, audiences for CI360. In the upcoming months, we're going to have energy forecasting we released in SAS Clinical Acceleration Repository. And then towards the back half of the year, we're also looking at um, SAS marketing decisioning. So the intelligent decisioning that you would have saw at the opening session today and how that's going to evolve for marketers. And then obviously all the Gen AI work that's happening along with Udo's work as well. Can you talk about the domain specific IP that you have there specifically? Yes. Like uh, help us unpack that yes. and understand where SaaS has unique IP that yes. you're contributing to these solutions. Yes, well it's an interesting thing, right? If you sort of look at the market out there, you see a lot of people that are in the sort of data and analytics space or people that are vendors in specific industries that are leveraging data and AI. And I think that's where our solutions make us unique in SaaS because we bring both to the table. And why that's sort of important is because when customers out there looking to simplify their ecosystem and reduce vendor costs, et cetera, we're one of the few options that can provide that both flavor of build versus buy for them. And how we've done it is have that domain specific IP that's gone deep within that industry, so we're solving for that industry problem. But as we've done that, customers have trusted us, say, hey, what about this other business problem that is an industry that's more horizontal related? So it sort of created what I call a woven product architecture between the vertical industry solutions we're doing and the horizontal business processes we're also getting into as well. What are the salient aspects of that industry solution? I mean, there's data, where's the data come from? Mm -hmm. There's the industry specific IP. Yes. What other components are there to make that package consumable? Yeah, sure, so you have the data and one of the things I'm pushing for in our solutions is really reducing our time to value. So having that data in a format for our product but looking at industry standards out there to hydrate that so it makes it an easier lift for the customer and not have that ETL burden that a lot of people have. And then also, once you have that information, all the power of via analytics come into play, right? All the things you see from the platform, the capabilities, the, being able to deploy these models into the environment and in conjunction with the business workflow is what Solutions is about. And you talked about the horizontal business process. Mm -hmm. How are, do you think about, or how are your customers thinking about change, their, them changing their processes as a result of AI and the sort of Gen AI awakening? Are you seeing like a lot of movement there yet or expecting to yeah. see movement and how would that affect your horizontal strategy? Yeah, so I think there's a lot of interest. I think people are still trying to figure out how to get value, right? I mean, we can talk in theory about all the things you can do in generative mm -hmm. AI, but when you're running a business, they want to know what's the bottom line and how much money is this going to save me or how much money it's going to make me. So from that perspective, we are looking at generative AI from that lens, right? Not of just having generative AI for that purpose, but where we can put it in the most critical aspects of the business process to help them to be more profitable. So right now it's very tactical, right? Yeah. I mean, while we can opine about how you know, things are going to change down in the future, yes. today it's like, show me the money. Yes, correct. I mean, in my philosophy with generative AI right now, it's like, 
you're seeing a lot of use cases in terms of querying data, that's your first step, right? And then the API, calling APIs based on that, API orchestration to execute a business process. And I'm excited to see Brian Harris's hot take and my hot take for sort of generative AIs. Everyone's talking about prompts, but I think we're going to get to a point where it's promptless generative AI, where it's working in the background and thinking about looking at the data and saying, hey, this is what you should be doing. Here are my recommendations. Which of course of actions do you want to take? I'm trying to, from a product perspective, get ahead of the puck because I think that's where we're going to go, uh, but we're setting up all the things to I'm really to glad you brought that up because I was saying to Brian, even though everyone's going to Gaga, including myself, over the models, I said the, the saved prompts is a really in indicator of where this is going. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is essentially the beginning of where you're going, where, okay, when you get something that works, you save it and you use it. Mm -hmm. And then it, there'll be more of that. Yes. And what's going to happen is AI will figure out quickly mm -hmm. what the real prompt is trying to ask mm -hmm. based on the market basket yeah. of prompts it went through. Almost like Dr. Goodright talking about compiler versus interpreter. Mm -hmm. You're kind of compiling all the LLM prompts and saying, hey, yes. this is the ones that are going to be runtime ready. Yeah, right. So, LLM or foundation model ready AI mm -hmm. is going to come. That's like a compiler conversation or an interpreter. <laughs> I mean, it makes things better. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's your reaction to that? Yeah, yeah, I mean, really everything about this is just learning on top of each other, and that's what we're all about with this, right? Just building on top of it. And if you can have that where it's sort of a promptless AI, and we're, it's sitting in your business workflow where it's clearly telling you when something's successful and when something's not, you can learn from that to improve the recommendations going forward and thus improve your business operations exponentially as you move forward. Talk about the, the, uh, the couple variables we want to kick your thoughts on. So all the, all the um, buzz has been, oh, training and inference. Okay, you got to train models. Sometimes you don't because it's, it's already trained. It's, it's raw data, it's, it's pure model. Mm -hmm. Inference gives the impression it's something's happening there, we're getting some logic and reasoning, and you save that going on. Then you got the prompt response, so mm -hmm. assume promptless, I agree with that, assume that happens. Mm -hmm. If that happens, then you're going to have a lot of reasoning going on, mm -hmm. and then a lot of reinforced learning happening yes. on the sides. Okay, great. Now, the question, okay, <laughs> if I'm going to have all this reasoning, how do I change my application knowing that it's scoped end to end to manage the best reasoning, best workload to performance hardware? How do I match what I need at any given time to be elastic-like? Yeah. So, okay, I'm going to do a prompt that's promptless, that's a lot of I.O. in my mind. Then you mm -hmm. say, well, I'm going to need to think about something. I might shift that workload prompt mm -hmm. to a different cluster mm -hmm. or a different system. This is going to require orchestration, it's going to require you know, scheduling. It sounds like an operating system to me. Yeah, yeah. What's your reaction to that? I mean, it, it, it's an interesting thought because I mean it is, because you're basically trying to mimic human behavior and what we're thinking. So it is an operating system. It's basically a human operating system <laughs> or mimicking one, right? That's what we're getting to. Now that's what excited about me with the solutions and the possibilities here. Because one of the things that we have is solutions across these horizontals, across multiple disciplines. So to get the best answer, you're going to want something that connects something on like, for example, looking at your sales and how does that impact my cash flow downstream? And having an interconnected horizontal suite of solutions on like that is going to give our customers the best decision making advantage possible because they're going to know the yeah. bottom line and how it ends. And you're going to need data and you need performance. If you don't have the data, there's a lot of blind spots. Dave calls it Swiss cheese. Mm -hmm. There's holes in the yes. what could be looked yes. at. And that's really where the hallucinations yep. come in that everyone's seeing on the mainstream. So the question is, how do you make all that data available? Yep. I mean, one, you got to you just, it's just naturally available. It's like, hey, I'm addressable. Yes. How do, how do you guys see that with, with SaaS? I mean, how do you guys think about it? Do you make it available? Is it in a self-contained system? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, from a data perspective, the, again, the going back to reducing the time to value and hydrating with the big systems out there, where all this data is, we're running, where, where are we running businesses on? We're running on ERPs, right? So connecting to those ERPs and getting that business yeah. information into our solutions, hydrating it. So we're taking their transactional information and putting it into an enterprise analytic platform and gaining insights across our entire business. What are you seeing in terms of, of, of adoption? And this, this is Gen AI specific data, but in the recent survey, about 1,800 uh, IT decision makers with our partner ETR, it was astounding, about 18% of the respondents said they're not doing Gen AI. Mm -hmm. And so I went out and was poking around a little bit and trying to find out why, and people said, well, first of all, it's, it's moving too fast, uh, it's really hard to predict, mm -hmm. and we don't trust it. Yes. We're in a regulated industry, for yep. example, and so we're going to sit back, like the Bubba Gump shrimp, yeah. we're going to let the hurricane take, you know, wash away, and then we're going to come in and, and, and double Forest down on our Gump reference. Beds. 
Or what? That's a Forrest Gump reference. Nice. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, right, you know what I'm talking about? That scene where they just yeah, sort of wait for everybody to get washed out. They end up, up, they end up out. monopolize the shrimp business because right. all the so, boats were parked. And, and they, the they let pool. everybody else make the mistakes. Okay, so uh, does that does that those stats hold water? The other thing we see is that over 40 percent of the customers say they're stealing from other budgets to mm -hmm. fund AI. It's not like the macro is just everybody's writing checks, mm -hmm. right? It's, there's there's a balance there with you know the, the two-year T-bill at, uh, mm -hmm. at, at 5%. Okay, are, are you seeing that in, in it, does that resonate with you yep. or, or align with what yep. you're seeing? Are there specific industries that are more aggressive or less aggressive because they're maybe not as regulated? What yep. are you seeing? Yeah, I think it does resonate. I think it's probably people going through the learning curve of Gen AI. So everyone got excited, first of all, right, and wanted to test it out, and they saw all the hallucinations up front, right? Yeah, and, yeah. and we've heard this from SaaS before. It's like, really, it's a conversational interface at this point in time. You still need the other AI and business process to give you what the real answer is behind it, right? So when they realize that level of work is still needed to it, then they're starting to shy away a little bit, right? Uh, especially in regulated industries and things like that. And I think that's where SaaS solutions come into play because we can do that for them, alleviate the burden and that lift for them so that they can be turnkey solutions that come in and get that information and the results that they want without having to invest all the intellectual manpower internally within their own company to go develop and build it themselves. John, talk about the uh, strategy of SaaS vis-a-vis -vis other alternatives. The customers that, that you have, and have uh, they deal with everyone else too. You got a lot of ecosystem partners, I saw the big logos up on, this, on the stage on the mm -hmm. screen. Uh, some people want to have a horizontal play, and some people have a vertical play, yep. depending on what you have. Some have built in open data platforms, some want to have yep. industry specific yep. solutions. So you have a real diverse approach to yes. industries. Yes. And then complicate that with the third dimension, which is the uh, domain specific models mm -hmm. and intellectual property, so okay, I am, and all this data is very specific to my domain, but I want horizontally scalable everything else. Yeah. I want, I want to integrate APIs with a competitor or yep. potentially a partner. Yep. All this is going on. So this, the customers have to deal with multi-vendor, multi-environment, yep. now multi-modal models. Mm -hmm. what, what makes SaaS differentiated in that market? Because that's the current situation. Yeah, correct. And I think it's uh, the differentiation is op the optionality that we provide to say, you can buy whatever you want, you can build whatever you want, and it doesn't have to be ours, right? We are not afraid to say we're boxing people out. We are going to stand on the value of our solutions as they stand. We're going to create an open ecosystem where other people can integrate, and they can choose where they want to plug in things, where they want to use our things, et cetera, and we will win them on the value that we So we're you're saying to customers, you have optionality, we're going to give you optionality yes. via choice. Yes. You can, we think we've got a good system. Yes. And where do you say your winning strategy is when you say, but that being said, <laughs> we're yeah, better here. Exactly. Fill in the blank. We're better because of blank. Yeah. We'll give you optionality, but I'll tell you, having an enterprise analytic solution that goes across your business workflow is going to give you insights that none of these niche players can give you because they're only looking at their very specific parts of the business process. And two, we're going to come in at much more value because we're going to give you one vendor, one price point to work with for all these solutions going across versus having to negotiate and manage all those ecosystems, different infrastructure and internal IT staff that you have to manage all that. So your key is across multiple workflows, across multiple environments and potentially companies. Yes. So, we, go ahead, please, sorry. No, I mean, giving all the optionality and flexibility, meeting our customers where they're at and where they need us. How do I consume these industry specific models? I can subscribe to them? Is, mm -hmm. it, a, is it a consumption model? Is it, how, how do you price that? How do I get started? And, uh, and what is it going to cost me? Yeah, <laughs> I mean even there I think we're going to have optionality, right? Mm -hmm. Some people might want those models just by itself and not even use them with the solutions. Go for it, right? But all those models coming out, I want to build a way to integrate those into the solutions so that you can pick and choose. So think about having a solution that, uh, let's take uh, a credit rating, right? It's taking a risk of default mm -hmm. and putting a model on there and having something in our solution that says, here, Here's a graph that looks like if you had subscribed to this model, here's the information and the outcomes you would get out of that. But for you to have this, you need to subscribe to this model and purchase it over here. So like, again, even within the solution itself, giving the optionality to our customers of whether they want that specific model, whether they want to build their own model and plug it in and get that functionality in the solution with their own uh, development or getting it somewhere else. Josh, it'd be great to have you on theCUBE because you're touching product management and solutions which, you know, the, the, the cloud is, and, and, and AI is very Lego block-like. Mm -hmm. But now you got end-to-end, -end, put that all together. Uh, a lot of opportunities. 
I want to ask you about what's next the future of SaaS because mm. you talk about time to value, yes. okay? Um, but there's also the, you know, you got the design time versus run time, mm -hmm. uh, and then you got the generative AI piece behind it. But yeah. what, is the, what is the difference between design time and run time, and what's the distinction between those two factors? Yeah, sure, so the design time is really getting the models trained up in terms of getting them functional and getting the outcome that you want. That takes a lot of horsepower, that's perfect for Vi and what uh, that provides there. But once you have that, you don't need that same horsepower to execute it on a transactional basis to get the outcomes that you want. And that's what I'm talking about runtime. So solutions are really runtime in nature. They are delivering business outcomes once the model's are already produced and you have the AI uh, capabilities that you need. So embedding in with that workflow, let's reduce that uh, cost in terms of the infrastructure that you need, et cetera. Let's, so it lets us to go downstream in the market and also pass down some of that savings to our customers. Not to bring up runtime again, but when you think about generative AI, it's generating. Yeah. It's not static world that's pre-programmed. It's generating. Mm -hmm. So at runtime, mm -hmm. again, Dave, back to the operating system. Yeah. <laughs> you know, at runtime, things got to happen. Yes. They got to load, they got to, that's going to require new software. Yeah. That's the key to success, right? Yeah, correct. And the, there's a lot of pieces, right, that are happening, right, that you can see, and we're, and we're looking at all of it with SaaS, right? We're trying to <laughs> figure out design runtime, time to value, generative AI, taking models, yeah. embedding in the solutions, and that's my role here, putting all these pieces together and delivering. Final question, real quick. What's the vibe like inside SaaS right now? We got a billion dollars yeah. saying, hey, that's a North Star. I'm sure the founder's like, okay, we're all in. Yeah. That's, that's like saying we're burning, we're going to transform right now. Yeah. yeah. We heard that last event we were at. What's the vibe like inside the, yeah. the folks in SaaS right now and the customers? Yeah. I mean, I think they're excited. I mean, look around here, right, and all the things that we're cranking out. And I mean, I thought the opening session was amazing. You see, like, the passion and the people. Uh, up there demoing yeah. workbench and things like that, et cetera, and the capabilities that they're able to do in such a short time, right? We were only here, I think, back in October, right? A few yeah. months ago, yeah. and all the things we're announcing now that weren't announced even a few months ago, here we are. It's nice to see fruit on the tree, right? Mm -hmm. Coming off that yes. harvest. Not yet harvest, it's, it's yeah. still blooming. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Too many metaphors. Sizzle and steak, fruit on the tree. Next year, when we're here talking next, mm. what are we going to be talking about? What do you anticipate is going to be the top story and what you'll be talking about? Yeah, I think you're going to talk, you're going to be seeing a, a lot more solutions, again, looking at the uh, design, uh, design time versus runtime. So us going further down market with App Factory, you're going to see us getting more traction with the models that we're going to release and having those embedded within our solutions. And then also keep on reducing that time to value, looking at all those industry yeah. standards out there so that we can hydrate that and get our customers yeah. up and running as fast as possible. I mean, it's a great opportunity to accelerate the application process, the value, mm -hmm. Utility, mm -hmm. government, citizens, enterprise, customers. Yes. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. John Boyd, Vice President of Solutions, Product Management, SaaS. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE, with Dave Vellante, my co-host. We'll be right back with more coverage, theCUBE, the leader in high-tech coverage. <laughs>